I'm finally upgrading the head unit in my TC. I'm going to install the ATOTO A6PF, which is well reviewed and inexpensive. I'll have a link to it in my video description below. Let's get it unboxed and review the contents. We have the installation manual, the operating manual, the brackets assembly guide, and info for an upcoming GPS tracking service. This is the main 16-pin harness that the power, speakers, and steering wheel controls will connect to. This harness is for the front camera, video, aux audio, and mic inputs, as well as the subwoofer out. Everything is nicely labeled like this. This is the rear camera input, as well as the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antennas. We've got two USB input cables. This one has a 6-pin connector, so it's for the external storage devices, while the other one is the phone link USB with a 4-pin connector. These are line-out converters for the front and rear speakers. They wire into the 16-pin harness if you need to have line-level outputs for an amp. This is an external mic, although the head unit already has a built-in one that I'm just going to use. Here's the GPS antenna. I'll have to figure out where to mount it. These are the double-din brackets that attach directly to the head unit, and these are the universal mounting brackets along with two different sets of screws. We have the faceplate trim, clear screen protection film, frosted protection film, and the head unit itself, which has a bit of weight to it compared to the Linux head unit that I'm installing in my friend's TC. Here's the antenna and GPS inputs on the left, various accessory connections in the middle, and the main 16-pin harness connection on the right along with the fuse. Alright, the first thing I want to do is install the brackets and test fit it in the car. The double-din brackets attach to the sides using the six smaller screws. We aren't going to use these mounting brackets, but the factory ones instead which I still have attached to the aforementioned Linux head unit. I'll just need to transfer the brackets over. Something to note on here is that the 16-pin harness is going to be the same style as the one for the ATOTO unit, and I've already confirmed that I could use this harness if I wanted to. You can see all the wiring is the same, which makes changing out head units very easy, as long as it also uses a 16-pin harness. Here's the factory head unit so you have a better point of reference. We'll want to match the mounting holes here on the new unit. This hole seems to be the only one that lines up, but it shouldn't be a problem as I had the same issue with the Linux head unit. The bracket seems pretty secure now that I've tightened down the screw. Now for the next part. As you can see, the factory head units are 8 inches wide while the standard width is 7 inches. On the Linux one, I had to design and 3D print custom spacers. I'm hoping I can use these universal ones in the new head unit instead. Good, two of the holes line up. I had to use a shorter screw here because when I used the supplied one, it would cause the double din bracket to push out when you tightened it down. That looks pretty good, but we definitely need to use the faceplate trim. Not bad, that looks better than expected. I'm going to install the frosted protection film to prevent more smudges like this and also to protect the screen from scratches. I'm still working the bubbles out from behind the screen protector, but as for fitment, I had to take the faceplate trim off because it was preventing the dash trim from popping into place, but it looks awful without it. The universal spacers and faceplate trim may work with other cars, just not mine. Here's my 3D printed solution. I'll put a link to the model in the video description, but I think I'm going to make an update to it so I can use the longer screws that came with the A6PF. If you're not comfortable with wiring, you might want to get some help for this part. I picked up the Toyota radio harness from Red Wolf. I'll have a link for it in the video description. I got the set that also included the antenna harness. I had to get the USB harness separate. Time to match up the wires together and then solder them for a secure connection. Twist the wires together, heat it from below and apply the solder from above, and then finish it off with some heat shrink. There's two brown wires in the smaller radio harness that aren't used, so I removed them. I used a micro flathead screwdriver to lift the tabs above the pins to release them. 
As for the rest, the purple pair is for the rear right speaker, and the green pair for the rear left. The gray pair is for the front right speakers, and the white pair here is for the front left. The red wire is the switched ignition power. I added a female bullet terminal so I can plug the backup camera power in here. The pink wire goes to the reverse trigger, but I'm still waiting for a 28-pin Toyota harness to connect it. The blue wire is for the power antenna. You'll want to also splice the blue wire from the separate antenna harness here. The yellow wire is for constant power, while the orange one is connected to dimmer illumination. The remaining two wires are for steering wheel controls as well as the jack. They give you the option to use either one or the other. Hold off on the black ground wire for now. The last harness I needed finally showed up. This is for connecting the ASWC1 steering wheel control interface adapter, but I'm just going to use it for the 28 pin harness since you can program the steering wheel control signals directly into the head unit. So I was hoping I could just plug this into the jack and have the steering wheel controls work, but when I trace the wire, it terminates here and doesn't go back to the 28 pin harness. I'm just going to cut this end off instead. All I need is the parking brake wire, reverse trigger wire, both steering wheel control wires, the common control ground wire. This blue and gray one doesn't go to anything and can be removed, but we want to keep the aux cables for connecting the audio jack by the factory USB port. To remove the blue and gray wire, stick a pin in the slot above the harness pin, and then the wire should come right out. I don't need this section here, but I'm going to save it for later just in case. Now let's get this connected to the radio harness. This is why I said to wait on the ground wire earlier. I had to push the harness pin out so I could slide a new piece of heat shrink tubing on. I forgot that I need to splice the black wire from the 28 pin harness to the ground wire first. I finished getting all the other wires connected. This light green one goes to the brown parking brake wire on the backup camera harness. The dark green reverse trigger wire goes to the pink rear camera plus wire. This is what triggers the rear camera when you go into reverse. The green and yellow wire goes to one of the steering wheel control wires. And the black and green wire to the other one. It doesn't matter which one they connect to. Here's the black wire that I just fixed that goes to the chassis ground. And the RCA cables for the aux input. I reinstalled my radio just so I can show you how to remove it. Start by pulling the dash trim out from the bottom corners, then the upper right corner, and finally the tricky upper left corner. Push in the tab to unplug the harness. The head unit is held in place with four 10mm bolts. I highly recommend disconnecting your car battery's negative terminal before pulling the head unit out. Now to unplug the antenna, USB, 28 pin harness, both radio harnesses, and the backup camera. Note that I've covered any unused connections. Alright, the radio harnesses are plugged in here. If you look at the smaller factory harness plug, you'll see that you'll need to cut some plastic out of the Red Wolf harness for it to fit. That's because it's not the exact harness for this car, but I saved some money by ordering it. Otherwise, you can just get the Metra brand. Here's the 28-pin harness for the steering wheel controls, the antenna, and the USB harness. I connected it to the external storage input. I'm going to redesign the faceplate trim later to have a USB-C port for the phone link connection. Keep watching to the end of the video to see how it turns out. My existing 12 volt backup camera connection is plugged in here, and I added a male bullet terminal to the red power wire so I could plug it into the ignition wire. Now to connect the GPS antenna, which I almost forgot about. I was thinking of running the wire up the A pillar and mounting it towards the top of the windshield, but I've seen some users mount theirs inside the dash above this metal bar. The GPS signal shouldn't have any problems going through the plastic dash. I used Velcro to secure the antenna on top of the wiring harness above the bar and I've connected the wire to the back of the head unit. I've already confirmed the head unit works, but before I bolt it in, let's redesign that faceplate. And here's my alternate design that includes a USB-C port via a short adapter cable that I've press fit into place. 
I'll put a link to the cable and the model in the video description below. To keep the adapter from moving, I have a mounting bracket that sits on top on the back side. There's enough of a gap on the side that I don't have to worry about the adapter cable getting pinched. Alright, let's get the console trim in place and test out everything. I've already booted up the head unit, so it should wake up pretty quickly from sleep when I turn it back on. They say two seconds on the box. And exactly as advertised. Now to test the camera. A slight delay, but it works. Now for the steering wheel controls. I'm going to use SWC setup. I just need to press in a button and confirm that the head unit sees it. Now to hold down each button and press an icon on the screen to program it. That was simple. Let's save the settings and test it out. Volume works. Let's check the mode button. Ooh, that's actually a bit louder than the factory head unit. I have a Bluetooth OBD2 scanner plugged in, so I can use the Torque Pro app. This is just a quick layout I did for this video. The GPS appears to work just fine installed in the dash. I have a flash drive in here, so I can test the external storage USB connection. I'll just load up File Manager. And here's the contents of the drive. I don't have anything I can use to test the aux input, but I'm sure it works. Last but not least, the phone link input works as I have Android Auto running through the connection. I've actually had a few days to play around with the head unit and get my audio tuned, and I'm extremely happy with it. I hope this helps you out if you want to install an A6PF or similar head unit in your TC. If you haven't hit subscribe to my channel yet, please do so now, and as always, thank you for watching.